the existence of God is a topic that has been discussed for thousands of years and has many, many different approaches, many of which build on top of each other, many of which are completely different. But I've decided that today, just as a one-off, that I would propose another argument for the existence of God, founded fundamentally in the Platonic idea of participatory metaphysics, found in places such as Plato's Phaedo and in Plotinus's Aeneids. For the sake of this video, we're going to call this the argument by participation, and it doesn't claim to be a complete knockdown argument, but rather this is more made with a mind for people to start poking at it and seeing where the weaknesses are so that it can be improved. This argument is fundamentally one of deductive reasoning, or rather disproving the alternative case so that we can assert the case as regards reality. So we will initially begin by assuming that all objects possess existence in themselves. This is something similar to what Joe Schmid posits as existential inertia, wherein things can only be destroyed when they themselves are destroyed. So being is a property possessed by objects or by statements. There is no absolute being. This would be the first premise for the argument. However, we observe in the second place that this would mean that the being of particular things would be reckoned relative to other things. So for example, to reckon the being of the calculator that I'm currently looking at, this has to be relative to me, and likewise my being is reckoned by the calculator. Now this has a serious problem, because we observe in reality that in some sense things are destroyed. So how would this work? It would also become possible that two different objects could have two different relative positions on particular things. So, for example, I could simultaneously exist and not exist, dependent on the reference point within the object itself. Now, I think that this causes an absurdity, because this leads to the law of non-contradiction being violated, because this would mean that I simultaneously exist and don't exist. And therefore, this would mean that this position would be false, and the only way to resolve this would be to have a single point of reference wherein things are reckoned to be in being. And therefore from here we can assert that there is an absolute being. And we can assert this is God, because that absolute being grants other things being. Things are in being insofar as they participate in being. And this includes things with personal attributes, such as human beings. Now, nobody, I think, would assert that personality is something that is a negative characteristic, that meaning that it is, an abs it is a part of something that occurs when something is destroyed. So for example, I can't hack down a tree and it develops a personality. So therefore we can assert that personality is a positive attribute, and therefore in some sense must be manifest in the absolute being, because there are not things in being that are created outside of being. Now, so far as I'm concerned, the only way to meaningfully refute this argument, and even then I don't think it really works because it still concedes a single point of reference, is to deny that there is a distinction between objects at all in reality, and that therefore everything is the point of reference. It would be essentially to say that un the universe is pantheistic, as opposed to classically theistic, which is the result of the argument I've just posited. Now, of course, the problem with this would be that all our observations of separate objects would cease to exist, first of all. Second of all, you would have to deny change, because if the universe is all absolute being, then what would it mean to change? It's already in being to the fullest. There can't be any, any kind of corruption or generation occurring. There just simply is. right? You would have to deny any kind of change for this to occur. Thirdly, you would have to posit that everything in being had the same level of personhood. So, for example, this would mean that, obviously I'm speaking here analogously because we've rejected the existence of separate objects, the Holy Bible that I'm currently looking at has just as much personality and just as much intellect as I do. Which also becomes a problem when we consider that I can't read other people's mind. If we possess the same personhood, then I can't read... I should be able to read someone else's mind, because there's nothing separating me from them. 
and we'd be we should be able to do this in an absolute sense. However, for some reason we are lacking this power. Fourthly, you would have to deny time, at least in so far as time is a manifestation of causation. Because of course, time, at least even as an abstraction, time is contained within being, and absolute being can't change. Therefore, time can't change if time is the same as being. So, perhaps as a conclusion to this particular part of the video, I'm not convinced by this position. I'm sure that there are other people in the comments section who will argue more convincingly for this, or for alternatives. I'd like to summarise the characteristics of a view that would hold to what I've just described. First of all, you couldn't have a universe that was mechanistic, so you'd just be able to reject that right there. Secondly, the universe would have to be monistic, because there would be no distinction outside of being. Thirdly, everything would need to be present, so there would be a presentism in the universe. Fourthly, you'd need to deny change, which would mean that act and potential could never exist, so there would be no change outright. Fifthly, you'd need to have an effectively nominalist view of categories, because there would be no distinction in the absolute being which we're all in, in an absolute sense. This is just a few things that you would have to hold. Now, I'm not going to elaborate any further. This is effectively more of a video to let you know that I'm still alive, because I haven't uploaded in a very long time due to exams and other things. But I would like in the comment section for people to start poking holes in this and seeing where it can be improved or other potential oppositions to this argument. Because I haven't heard really any yet at all from anybody. So um, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.